today we have some very sad news. As you see on my shirt, a pharaoh has passed away. The embalmer will now oil the body. As you see here, we have a mummification right now. Welcome to The Life, an e-news media presentation. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. On today's show, we will be getting our annual State of the School address from Dr. Larry Weiss. But first, these announcements. In honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., there will be no school on Monday, January 15th. Yay! Please hold Dr. King, his family, and all communities seeking social justice in the light. <laughs> all parents and guardians are encouraged to attend the January 24th PAT General Meeting to be held from 8.30 to 10 a.m. The meeting will be dedicated to gathering parent input and feedback to the Board of Trustees current undertaking to develop a new strategic plan. On Monday, January 29, 2018, everyone is invited to witness and honor the history, legacy, and treasures of Brooklyn Friends School. There will be a special event, museum exhibition, and book launch at the Brooklyn Historical Society, 128 Pierpont Street at 6.30 p.m. Please save the date and plan to attend, but remember to RSVP. Oh, the Panther wants to see you at a game. So check out all your favorite Panther team's schedule by going to bfsathletics.org. Today we're here to talk to Dr. Larry Weiss, head of Brooklyn Friends School, to discuss the state of the school. So we sat him down for a few questions. When did you first start teaching at BFS? And what was the main difference in the school? And what has remained constant? In 1973, September of 1973, that was the beginning of my teaching career. Brooklyn Friends, at that time, it was just a really exciting place to work. The idea of innovation, the idea of being able to respond to student interests in particular areas, and certainly the war in Vietnam, the civil rights struggle, and what was going on in New York City in the late 70s were areas of great interest to students. The fact that we could develop curriculum around those areas at the same time as really going deeply into the history as a discipline, having students do a lot of really good writing, that was, that was very exciting. The level of student self-discipline and readiness to take on challenges, the diversity of the students, which was um, significant in the 1970s in comparison with other schools, but is now, I think, much more deep and established as a value of Brooklyn Friends. Even with the International Baccalaureate Program defining a lot of the 11th and 12th grade curriculum, that there's still enormous improvisation and uh, innovation in the way teachers approach the material and we can see that from Family Center all the way through to the high school. That's really uh, where some of the similarities are. At the end of the month there will be another special event in honor of Brooklyn Friends School's sesquicentennial. Appropriately enough at the Brooklyn Historical Society. What can you tell us about this? The advancement office uh, under Karen Edelman's uh, really fantastic leadership reached out to the Historical Society to help us research a book for the uh, sesquicentennial uh, and uh, a set of panels, visual panels and other visual materials that would document the 150 years of Brooklyn Friends history. And so this presentation at the Brooklyn Historical Society is really going to cover both the substance and the aesthetic side of uh, our work. In a couple of weeks there will be a PAT general meeting 
about the new Board of Trustees strategic plan. Can you briefly tell us about the last strategic plan and specifically what parents can contribute to the new plan? The fundamental reality of PAT meetings is that you have parents there with kids who are going to graduate in 15 years. And most strategic plan horizons are 10 to 15 years, so you have at least five years of parents whose kids are going to go through the school while this strategic plan is moving from development to completion. So parents have a great deal to say about this and the participatory investment that parents make on being part of this community and being welcome parts of this community that we're really looking to mobilize for uh, this, this planning cycle. So the last strategic plan has been basically my Bible um, that was given to me by my predecessor, Michael Mill. It was very, very ambitious. In the first three years, we looked at 10 different uh, possibilities for a separate high school and uh, for a separate preschool and lower school. In the meantime, we were able to increase enrollment uh, from the 600 level uh, up to uh, the low 700s, uh, but the goal was uh, to get to 925 or so with the average grade size of uh, 60. We were able to do a lot of substantial renovation in Pearl Street, this 2010 to 2013, so that we could accommodate those class sizes for kindergarten uh, through fourth grade. Then we were finally able to work on the um, site that became our new Lawrence Street High School. And our enrollment is uh, 917 uh, this year. The plan, 2008 to 2018, that 10 year sequence is more than fundamentally completed. Now that we have grown, now that we have uh, an adequate facility, now that we have a commitment to diversity, inclusion, and uh, equity and social justice, how do we build on that foundation in a way that is not dependent on growth, but dependent on depth? Our community has been redefined to include MetroTech. Downtown Brooklyn is a totally different place than it was in 1973, and even a totally different place than it was in 2010. Through our service learning, educational programs, value structure, and our Quaker connection, how can we uh, really become a vital part of downtown Brooklyn uh, in a way that we've never really been able to, to achieve the depth uh, because we've been so concentrated on our own survival and, uh, and our own growth. I think Brooklyn Friends uh, is really fully capable of moving in uh, the 50 years between the sesquicentennial and the bicentennial to be seen as a truly great Quaker school, a truly great progressive school, and a truly great Brooklyn school. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, students. Thank you, parents. Thank you, faculty and staff, and everyone who made the show possible. And just remember to let your life speak.